In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please all rise. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this celebration of life for our brother Mike as he is fondly called by the family and friends and here in our community. It is an opportunity for us to reflect on the Word of God, His message of salvation, and also as witnessed by Mike in his lifetime, how he faithfully responded to God's invitation to live life as all of us are called to that great call of life. Today, in unity with the family and friends of Mike, I invite each of us to join me in this celebration as we give thanks to God for that gift of life that Mike received in his lifetime in this world. And we believe that he is now peacefully at rest with God in his kingdom. And so to Angela and Amber, to you, friends and family of Mike and Angela, my deepest condolences. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the mysteries of Christ's love. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mother of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again, mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Mike, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality, Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my 
second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured into the hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we are still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received recon reconciliation, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees me, who sees the Son, that everyone who's, who sees me, I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in me, in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Let me sit down now as I'll give you a little reflection of what we heard from the Word of God today. And as I started with this uh, celebration, we joined together in this celebration, especially for the family of Amber and Angela, who specifically make this day special, not only for them, but most of all for Mike, because he has been a part of our life. He's been part of this community. And so making this celebration happen in this way is also making it possible for those who are joining us from a distance, those who are staying at home, Mike's family and friends, and even those who are staying home way back in the Philippines where he passed. And so if you're watching now in the celebration, I am extending also my condolences to you, especially that Mike have been taken by the Lord when he's, he's there in the Philippines. The first reading today talks about the wisdom of God. This wisdom is not just a virtue. It is a wisdom that God gives to a believer. When the believer receives this wisdom, he recognizes life after death and lives accordingly. By doing so, he is able to walk in the, the path of righteousness. He looks forward with hope to a bountiful reward in the kingdom of God. Just as the loving father disciplines his children, so does God set the righteous free from the vices and forms them in virtues. But the question is, what if you do not have the wisdom of God and therefore you have not been following the path of righteousness? St. Paul's response in his letter to the Romans says that a sinful person cannot save himself. He needs the grace of God through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ by his death and resurrection. Our church teaches us that our redemption is not obtained by faith alone. Faith and works are necessary in God's plan of salvation. St. Paul insisted that we need the grace of God in order for us 
to be able to fulfill the demands of laws and not and to act accordingly. By our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are justified, but at the same time, he requires our cooperation by putting it into practice. Please understand, let us now pray the prayers of the faithful. Let us pray that our, young, that our brother Mike, who experiences life to the full with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, that the love of the Christian community be a source of strength for all of us who grieve for our brother, Mike, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the memory of the short life that he has in this world shared with us be a source of consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. That Mike and all who have died today enjoy the vision of God with those in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. That all family members and friends of Mike experience the strength of our faith in the resurrection of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. that all who gather here today remember our beloved Mike, support one another in prayer and concern. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh God, we affirm our faith and our hope in the resurrection of your Son, comforted by your grace and your promise of eternal life. We offer you our prayers on this day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh uh -huh. 
pray now, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of yours and mine will be acceptable before God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the and praise and glory of his name, name for our good, good and good, good of all his church. Holy church. Let us pray. As we humbly present to you this sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Mike, we beseech your, beloved, your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, O Lord, life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven, and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with our Pope Francis, our Pope Meritus Benedict, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also, especially your servant Mike, whom you have called today from this world to yourself, grant that he who was united with your son in death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And in the words that Jesus told us, please all rise, let us all together say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have Behold Jesus, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to partake to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all, <clears throat> above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there <clears throat> and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacraments of his body, Food for the journey, 
mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our beloved Mike may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, may I request everyone to sit down and from those who are joining us from a distance, from their homes, from the Philippines, uh, we're going to hear something about Mike from Amber. I want to first thank all of you who are able to join us today via live stream and here, and for everyone who has reached out in some way to share memories about my dad since his passing a couple weeks ago. Each of you who reached out all shared the same sentiment about my dad, that he was a kind man, a good man, and a good father. There is a famous saying by Maya Angelou, People will, for, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And from the memories you've shared about my dad, it is evident that he touched all of our lives with his good-natured spirit, his humor, and always being the go-to guy for carving Thanksgiving turkeys and, bar and taking over barbecues, and he was always down for karaoke. But my dad was so much more than those things. He created real connection with everyone he met. Growing up, my dad and I were very close. He was the fun dad, always joking, showing me self-defense moves, taking me to Great America every summer. Um, thank you, Tito Bentong, for helping make that happen, if you're watching. My dad also took me on bike rides to Lake Vasona to feed the ducks and get a milkshake on the way home. We watched a lot of movies together, including some horror movies I was probably way too young to watch. And as young as I can remember, my dad always told me, you're gonna be rich one day, Amber, and you're gonna buy me a camper and a Rolex watch. And I took him seriously. But although I never was able to pull off buying those things for him, I always knew that he was proud of me. You see, I never had to earn my dad's respect because he always, made it known that he was proud of me. I never had to earn his love because he gave that to me unconditionally. And he always fully supported me. And most of all, I knew he always had my back and that I could always count on him. My dad was also a dreamer. He was full of ideas for inventions, which is why he loved technology. And he also played the lottery every week too. I was part of the dreamer part of him. And being the provider that he was, he always wished to provide more for my mom and I. I just hope that he knew that he always provided me everything that I actually needed. My dad wasn't rich from a materialistic standpoint, but he was the richest man I knew. He had an abundance of family and friends who adored him, and he married the love of his life. And he lived his life the way most of us aspire to live happy, carefree, and not stressing over the little things, not harboring jealousy or ill feelings towards others. Instead, he found joy in every moment of his life. And it's that way that he lived life that inspires me to live in constant gratitude and find the beauty and joy in every moment of my life. As difficult as it is to say goodbye, there are so many wonderful memories of my dad that I will always carry with me. He was a good man, he was a good father, and he was one of the best people I ever met. I will miss you, Dad, and I am grateful and proud that you were my father. I will always love you, and I will never forget you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
At sumayin niyo nawa ang pagpapala ng ating makapangyarihang Diyos sa ngala ng Ama, sa ngala ng Anak, at ng Espiritu Santo. Amen. Well, the sun is surely sinking down But the moon is slowly rising So this old world must still be spinning around And I still sing this song when I'm